Hey, g'day guys. For those of you who don't recognise us, my name is Matthew Arnold. I make commercial helicopter pilot based out of Australia. Today's video is the first in a series of how to prepare and pass your Australian CASA navigation exam. The topic I'd like to look at today, guys, is how to calculate helicopter rate of climbs or helicopter rate of descents. And on that note, guys, I'd sort of like to take a look at it from three different angles. The first one is quite simply how to actually do the basic calculation. The second angle I'd like to take a look from, guys, is, is a few hints and tips on how to actually pass the exam. Uh, I've seen a few students make the same, so similar common mistakes. I'd like to help you with that. And the third angle I'd like to look at from, guys, is, is what I think is really, really important as commercial or as private pilots that you can actually perform these calculations whilst you're flying and not just while you're sitting at your desk in an exam situation. So on that note, guys, let's crack into it. So guys, in order to get the most out of today's video, I really do encourage you to be proactive, sort of follow along, perform your own calculations, take your own notes. Uh, don't just sort of treat it like a normal YouTube video, let it play in the background. In order to do that, you'll need a couple of things. You'll need a pen or a pencil, you'll need an eraser, you'll need a ruler, and you'll need a calculator. Assuming you've got those things, Let's take a look at what information do you actually require to calculate our helicopter rate of climb or rate of descent. Quite simply guys, three things. Total elevation, you're going to be climbing, the total elevation, elevation you're going to be descending, the total distance and the ground speed. So once you've got that sort of information, or I guess what are the steps to calculate out the rate of descent or rate of climb? First of all guys, draw the diagram paper and simplify the question. Uh, I've, I've, I've sort of mentored a few few students and, and this is, tends to be a common area where they make mistakes is they try and sort of do it in, in their heads, they try and do it on the fly, an exam situation where you've got a bit of exam stress, exam pressure and this is where they sort of tend to come undone. So I really do encourage you and I, I'll step you through how I did it and how I recommend my students do it, which is draw the diagram paper, simplify the question. And stage two guys, calculate out the answer. And do that really in three steps. Calculate the distance travelled per minute, Calculate the number of minutes to your destination and divide the elevation by the number of minutes to your destination. So when would you actually use the rate of descent or rate of climb calculation? So as private pilot guys, as a commercial pilot, um, you know, a couple of things come to mind. You might use a beat climbing to avoid terrain. You might need to descend to remain outside controlled airspace. Or you might be descending to circuit height for landing. A bit of a practical example here guys. Um, I was actually ferrying a squirrel from Ayers Rock across to Charlieville, oh, sorry, across the Gold Coast, coming into Charlieville for landing. We were 20 miles out, so I made my call. Um, we were about 4,500 feet chasing tailwinds, and basically needed to sort of figure out, okay, what, what rate of descent do I require? I could have done what, I, you know, what an average pilot would do and just sort of lower the collective and, and bring it in, but instead I actually chose to sort of, you know, do a quick rate of, rate of descent calculation in my head and give myself an accurate sort of rate of descent. So four and a half thousand feet, I wanted to arrive, Charlie Gore was a thousand feet uh, above sea level, I wanted to arrive 500 feet above the circuit height, four and a half thousand feet, down to 1500 feet, 3000 feet, total descent. Uh, I was traveling 120 knots, uh, 20 mile to my destination, means I was doing, means it was going to take me about 10 minutes to get to my destination, 3,000 feet divided by 10 minutes, 300 feet per minute. So I simply lowered my collective, maintained my cruise speed and brought it in 300 feet per minute nicely above Charlieville circuit height. So guys, let's actually move on from that and sort of take a look at a few sort of questions here. So you're 20 miles from your destination aerodrome, 4,000 feet, traveling 120 knots with a zero wind component. What rate of descent is required to arrive at your destination at zero feet? So it's a fairly straightforward question, guys. All the information we need is there, and it's there in simple terms. So even though it's there in simple terms, guys, I still recommend you to go through and draw the diagram paper, simplify the question. So do that, guys. We draw a little helicopter here, we put our destination in, and step one, we calculate our elevation. So that's our starting height minus our destination height. So this one here, guys, we're at 4,000 feet, and we're traveling to our destination at zero feet. So a total the total elevation to descend here is 4,000 feet. Step two, guys, calculate your distance. That's your starting distance minus division of distance. So this one, guys, we're 20 miles out. We're effectively flying straight to our destination. 
so it gives us 20 miles to run. Step 3 guys, calculate your ground speed, so indicate their speed plus or minus that wind component. So we're travelling at 120 knots here, got a zero head wind component or zero wind component, so our ground speed is 120 knots. Stage 2, calculate our answer. So step 4 guys, calculate distance travelled per minute. So the ground speed divided by 60. So ground speed of 120 divided by 60 gives us 2 nautical miles per minute. Step 5 guys, calculate the number of minutes to our destination. So that's our distance to our destination divided by our distance per minute. So the distance of 20 miles there divided by 2 nautical miles per minute gives us 10 minutes to our destination. Step 6 guys, calculate the required rate of descent. So that's our elevation divided by number of minutes to destination. So it's a 4,000 feet there, divided by 10 minutes, gives us a descent of 400 feet per minute required. Next question guys, a little bit of a trickier question because the information required isn't clearly laid out, but rather we need to actually go through and calculate it out. So reading the question, you're 40 miles from your destination aerodrome at 6,000 feet. You're travelling at 110 knots with a 20 knot headwind component. What rate of descent is required to arrive 10 miles from your destination at 1,500 feet? So step one guys, or stage one here, draw the diagram on paper and simplify the question. So draw a little helicopter, draw our destination in. And first thing we do is calculate elevation. So it's our starting height minus our destination height. So our starting height here is 6,000 feet. Our destination is 1,500. So it gives a total descent height of 4,500. Step two guys, calculate our distance. So our starting distance minus our finish distance. So we're 40 miles from our destination and we want to arrive 10 miles by destination at 1500 feet. So it actually gives us 30 nautical miles to run. And step three guys, calculate our ground speed out. So it's an indicated airspeed plus or minus our wind component. So we're traveling here at 110 knots. We've got 20 knot headwind component. So it gives us a 90 knot ground speed. So you can see guys, we've taken what is potentially quite a complex question and by drawing on paper and simplifying it out, we've brought it back to some very simple basic terms, or basic sort of information we require. Stage two guys, now we've simplified it, is to go through and calculate the answer. So first step here is calculate distance travelled per minute. So that's our ground speed divided by 60. So that's our 90 knots divided by 60, gives us 1.5 nautical miles per minute. Step 5 guys is calculate the number of minutes to our destination. So that's our distance to our destination divided by our distance per minute. So that's our 30 nautical miles divided by 1.5 gives us 20 minutes to our destination. Final one guys here, calculate our required rate of descent. So that's our elevation divided by our number of minutes to our destination at 4,500 feet divided by 20 minutes gives us a descent required of 225 feet per minute. So for our final question here guys, we're going to go through and calculate out a helicopter rate of climb. So the question, you're taking off from an aerodrome at sea level at the 12 mile mark to avoid terrain you'll need to be 2,000 feet. If you fly at 80 knots with a 10 knot tailwind component, what rate of climb is required to avoid terrain? So as always guys, stage one here, draw the diagram on paper and simplify the question. So step one, calculate your elevation. This time guys, it's our destination height minus our starting height. So we're at 2,000 feet, so we're at zero feet starting height, we want to climb 2,000 feet, so it gives us a 2,000 feet required climb. Step two is calculate your distance, that's our finishing distance minus our starting distance. So we want to finish at the 12 mile mark, we're effectively starting at the zero mile mark, so it gives us a distance to travel of 12 nautical miles. Step three guys, calculate your ground speed. So that's your indicated airspeed plus or minus your wind component. So we're traveling 80 knots, we got a 10 knot tower wind component. So that gives us a total of 90 knots ground speed. Stage two guys, we calculate the answer here. So same as previous, we calculate distance traveled per minute. So that's our ground speed divided by 60. So 90 knots divided by 60 gives us 1.5 nautical miles per minute. Step 5 guys, we calculate the number of minutes to our destination. So that's our distance to our destination divided by our distance per minute. So we've got 12 miles to our destination divided by 1.5 miles per minute gives us 8 minutes to our destination. And finally guys, we calculate the required rate of climb. So that's our elevation divided by the number of minutes to the destination. So 2,000 feet divided by 8 gives us an answer of 250 feet per minute required rate of climb. Guys, I do hope this video has been beneficial, been helpful for you. 
If you do have any comments, any sort of questions, or any feedback you'd like to apply, just please put them in the YouTube comments here. Um, I do check those comments. I, I will sort of try and respond and, and help where, where I can. Um, otherwise, guys, best of luck with your exams and have a great day. Thanks.